Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Nimbasa City. Today we'll be looking at a round two matchup of the Lyon France Cup for the format Sun and Moon to Celestial Storm. This was played in the summer of 2018. On our left we have Buzzwool Garbador or Buzzgarb playing against Vicare or Vicavold Rayquaza on the right now. Generally the matchup is favorable for Buzzgarb since Vicare plays many GXs and the support Pokemon Vicavolt has fighting weakness. So attacking with Vicavolt is, well, not as recommended. It's also a stage two, which means it's less stable, less consistent, and a bit slower to set up. But with, with supporters such as Volkner, certain supporters, uh, among others, it's, um, I mean, it's not that inconsistent, but it's definitely no full basic deck. So, player A, playing Buzzwool Garbodor, starts off the turn with a Nest Ball, attaches a Beast Energy to the active, strong start, and Lily's up to 8, and passes the turn. With a Slugma on the bench, uh, that's pretty much the only s stage 1, well, the only support stage 1 the deck plays, and so getting that down turn 1 is really important. Um, and getting that Trubbish down early on is not as important, but it's good to have it there, uh, ready to attack in the future when there's a lot of items in the discard pile. Um, player B starts off with the Rayquaza and needs to get Grubbin Downs as early as possible in order to avoid Guzma and being, be able to start taking knockouts with, um... Being able to start taking knockouts using strong charge with Vicavolt and setting up damage with the 3 energy attack cost. So Ultra Balls for a Grubbin, discarding a Lightning Energy and a Guzma. Two not so important cards. Uh, Lightning Energy is important to get in the discard pile for Stormy Winds, uh, which is Rayquaza's ability. And Guzma, uh, less important because... because generally what you want to KO is in the active position. So attaches a Grass Energy to the active and just passes. Looks like they have what they need in hand. Don't need to um, Tempest GX, I think it's called, which is discard the hand and draw 10 cards. So back to player A, they draw a card and looks like they're going to play down an Ultra Ball, probably getting out of Macargo, just r really setting up the port, the board position. Discarding a Cynthia and a Guzma. Two supporters, the Guzma, quite important, but generally you play four of them. And they're also searchable with Macargo, so not necessary this turn, and it looks like the other cards in hand are more important. The deck doesn't play many energy, so you don't want to discard that. Um and you want to keep cards like Ultra Ball in, in hand. Yeah, it looks like there was other Cynthia's in the hand. Um, Ultra Ball discarding what, what looks to be like a Cynthia and a Fighting Energy. Uh, not optimal discards, but you know, with Ultra Ball, your discards are never optimal, <laughs> uh, especially in a deck such as uh, Buzzgarb Shrine where, you know, every single card is so important, you don't have a lot of discard draw or aggressive draw because you just can't afford to lose all of those cards. Uh, attaches a rainbow to the bench buzzwool. I don't really understand this play because it would have been better, um, Super Rider is not in the format, so it would have been better to discard the rainbow and attach the fighting energy, you're not susceptible to enhance hammer. And and you don't take the extra 10 damage, which means one fewer energy for v, for Rayquaza to need to take the KO. But um but we'll see what they have to do. Um 
Looks like a smooth over is coming down. Going to switch out either a Guzmo or an escape rope. Um, we can't play either of them right now, so it looks like it's just going to be an escape rope. This is good because it essentially has the same function as Guzma if the opponent doesn't bench another Pokemon. And the attack, uh, missing the shrine, kind of a shame because if the shrine was there and the Buzzwool was not knocked out, I don't think there's any way the Buzzwool could be knocked out this turn, then... Um, uh, then there would be 90 damage on that Rayquaza, 100 damage going back, and then another Sledgehammer for 80 would have taken the knockout. So the numbers would have worked out, but since there's no Shrine, that's, well, not much you can do there. So here comes down a Volkner and an Ultra Ball at the same time. Uh, putting a second item in the discard pile it seems and grabbing a lightning energy, a rare candy to rare candy to the Vicable that was searched out and now player B can strong charge for two energy and then attach from the hand and deal 120 damage unfortunately but what can you do? Becomes a rescue stretcher. Oh, there's a Rayquaza. With a Stormy Winds, you can discard the top three and attach a energy, grass or lightning from the discard pile to it. And just take the KO. Perfect. 150, exactly the damage needed to take out. Well, not exactly, but exactly in the range. Uh, one less would have not taken the knockout. So let's see what player A has to do to respond to this <clears throat> to this play. Player A promotes a Trubbish. If player A has a Garbodor and a Rainbow Energy in hand, then they can probably take the knockout um, with the Stormy Winds. If the Stormy Winds had discarded two energy, two item cards, then that would be 100 damage. And it looks like that's the case. Uh, as you can see from that die at the bottom, there are five item cards in the discard pile, in Player B's discard pile. So all they would need is that Lightning Energy uh, I think they have Lily in hand. Or it looks like they're just going to go for a Cynthia. Cynthia, yep. Uh, then if they get an Ultra Ball and a card they can play down, they can smooth over and then instruct for a Rainbow Energy. Or if they just draw into it as they did, they can simply start attacking with it. And there's a nest ball ready to fill up the bench. Two nest ball actually. So here comes that rainbow energy put to the front of the hand. And it does 100 damage ready to take that knockout. And let's see what happens, how player B decides to respond to this. Generally what you'd want to do is strong charge. Um, Maybe attach the Lightning to the Vicavolt and then attach from the hand to the Vicavolt if you have cards in hand for that. Player B only has two cards in hand, so that doesn't really seem to be much of an option. But either way, a Strong Charge is there to deal exactly 120 damage without any extra cards from hand. And. And so things seem to be looking up for the Vika Ray player. But Buzz Garb Shrine is known to really take back the game from slower starts. It's known for dealing a lot of chip damage and then finally taking huge knockouts with Trash Alange. So, yeah, takes the knockout with 
one, two, three, four, five items in the discard pile. That's 100 plus 80 already on there. And I take the knockout. Promote the, the Rayquaza. Bench is a Grubbin. And simply use a strong charge right off the bat. Makes sense if you, well, uh, if you have a draw supporter in hand, you would actually want to play that first so that you get the attachment from hand plus the strong charge. Um, but if they don't, it doesn't matter as much. Yeah, looks like they just have two dead cards in hand. Um, and takes the knockout. Still five cards in the five items in the discard pile, but they're on sledgehammer turns right now, which means that sledgehammer is doing is dealing more damage than trash Lunge. So the buzzwool should be coming up right now, with a choice band and a shrine that will take the knockout. So 120 base damage plus 20 from the diancy, plus 30 from the choice band. That's 170 plus 10 from the shrine of punishment. That takes the knockout. With the Macargo and Instruct, they should be able to get what they need. Bench is a Trubbish and throws down a Shrine. All that's left is the Choice Band. Let's see if they get it. Nope, grabs an energy. And seems to be just ready for the next turn and attacks for a hundred and fifty damage. Hundred and forty actual damage plus ten from the shrine. Will be ten going back to their turn, so attaches from the hand. Really getting ready to charge up that Vigavolt. Looks like there are three energy left in the deck after this strong charge. Uh, I think two grass and one lightning. And really just get ready to save the KO. Yep, attaches to the uh, Vickavolt and deals definitely enough damage that 7 energy times 30 that's 210 damage way more than enough and there are still only 5 items in the discard pile meaning that if the Buzz Garbage Run player does not take the knockout here which they will actually um, they have the energy but the Vika Ray player, player B, can simply just promote Vika Ray and start taking knockouts here. So let's see what they have to do. Um, here comes a smooth over. I am down. I didn't get to see what that card was. Probably an energy for next turn or a draw supporter. I mean, they don't really need anything else. Uh, maybe, uh, no, not even a choice band. Instruct for one. And simply a knockout. Now, I have been talking that it is a good position for the Vika Ray player, but they are actually behind on prizes. The Buzz Garb Shrine player has two prizes left, and the Vika Ray player has three prizes left. So still five items so we'll see how they really respond to this um, looks like can't really tell what's going on but the game plan should be get out another Vika Volt sort of play the seven prize game by setting up two Vika Volts and then finally attacking with a with a Rayquaza right at the end um, yeah um, Actually, I was looking at the wrong prizes. Just attacking with one Vickavolt when that Vickavolt goes down. Attacking with the right plaza right at the end. Uh, but if you play too many item cards, the Garbodor can take knockouts with only one attack. So we'll really see how player B decides to respond to this. Plays down a an energy recycler. Brings back 
looks like three lightning and two grass energy and decides to shuffle that back into the deck ready for more strong charges in the future I'm not sure if this was the right play I mean they didn't have many energy in the deck anyway so playing that eventually is a good plan um, use a strong charge immediately attaches to that grubbin uh, I would have attached it to the active because if after the Cynthia you do not draw what you need uh, which is to say another energy then after a strong charge you wouldn't be able to take the KO you only have the opponent is only dealing 120 damage with um, with trash Lunch. so even a Kakui wouldn't take the knockout but uh, and being able to stream attacks with Vic Volts is really the most important thing. But we'll see what they decide to do, how the game decides to develop. They take the knockout, 120 damage with um, something cannon. I don't remember that, exactly what it's called. Um, and just readjust the energy on the bench grubbin. They've attached a choice band to it. If player A has a field blower, then an energy and a Kukui, then that would take the knockout. But I don't know if they play a field blower. Field blower is less important in this meta. Uh, the only really played tool is choice band. Uh, and obviously choice band doesn't really do anything. Uh, it does add damage to trash lance to trash lance. But yeah, in my list I only played one field blower, but uh, I would definitely understand if other people opted to not play any. So player A decides to bench a Slugma, not sure if this is the greatest option, and attaches a f rainbow energy to the bench trash lunch. Use a smooth over, probably will play a Guzma and then instruct smooth over for a Kukui. Definitely the right play here. Being able to Guzma up that gr Grubbin, take the KO, it adds another tool, um, another item to the discard pile, and then being able to just use Kukui the following turn to take that KO on the active, definitely the right option. But if player B manages to take the KO, as we can see they have the energy in hand on the active trash lunch, then I don't really know how player A can respond to that. Uses instruct for one, really draws that Kukui, takes the KO, adds another tool to the To the discard pile, another item to the discard pile that adds up to 7, which makes it 140 damage, base damage. Looks like they have 2 cards in hand, uh, 2 energy in hand, plus an energy recycler, so definitely no shortage of energy here. Um, they can bench a grub in. I would not play any more tools at this, any more items at this point. But they play an ultra ball, because here's the thing. Once you take the KO on the Garbodor, they don't have anything behind that. They have a Sledgehammer that can do 100 damage. That's not a knockout. Um, maybe 140 damage. That's still not a knockout. And they don't have... Um, if they have a Guzma or an Escape Rope, then that would take the knockout. Uh, if you bent, if you decide to bench something, but um, yeah, um, I would say that the Beaker Bay player is in a good spot. They still, they only have two prizes left, and if I'm not mistaken, um, looks like an energy recycler is about to come down. Yep, shuffling. Um, three grass and two lightning the inverse of last time 
shuffles in that deck. Uh, probably no need because you're about to play that let loose anyway. But, um, you know, approaching the end of the game, generally quite an intense moment. And here it comes. Oh. Don't play the escape rope. Just just play the Marshadow, yeah. Just play the Marshadow. Yeah. But here's something I don't understand, right? Player B discarded two energy off that Ultra Ball. And, oh wait, no, is that four energy on the active? It looks like four energy on the active, actually. Kind of hard to see, but if that discard was taken, then that's fine. Uh, if that attachment was done, then that's fine. Then they draw four en four cards. Uh, looks like there's an energy in hand. Um, and they take the KO. Discarding three energy and draws a card. Draws a... Uh, promotes a Slugma. Uses Smooth Over. Probably for an energy. Uh, didn't let the opponent cut kind of strange but use an escape rope kukui for two attaches attack attaches and attacks for 50 damage um thanks to the resistance of marshadow and they draw a card looks like there's a guzma in hand so attach and player a scoops that's the end of game one fikori goes up one game over the next and yeah Let's see how game two decides to develop. Um, as you, yeah, I would say that the match that the matchup is only slightly favorable to Buzzgarb Shrine, but that's only if the Vikaray player plays down a lot of GX Pokemon, and if. Um, you know, in a perfect game, maybe the v player comes out on top. It's really hard to say. I would say it's one of those matchups that comes down to who plays it better. Um, some questionable decisions being made here and there, but nothing too bad. Nothing too offensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, back to the game. A, the Vicory player, uh, sorry, the Buzzgarb Shrine player starts, plays down a Nest Ball, getting out a Trubbish. Really just getting down those basics that evolved to stage ones early on. Um, plays down a Shrine, which was upside down for some reason. And attaches a Rainbow to the active and just passes. Now. Vicare has no way of taking any knockouts turn one. Really kind of a shame because uh, really kind of a shame because for a deck that can deal so much damage, uh, you'd expect it to be able to take a lot of knockouts. Um, early on, but it is a stage two base deck stage two support so it really needs that um it really needs that vicar Volt in play to be able to start taking knockouts here comes an ultra ball discarding a grass and a lightning energy getting out a grubbin really just like the opponent getting out those basics ready to evolve into stage twos attaches a grass to the active and lily for six an extremely strong start I see a candy and two treasures, but no Ultra Ball. But the treasure can go for a Tapu Lele, getting out of Volkner for an Ultra Ball. And they just pass the turn. Um, and play a draws, attaches a choice band, adjusts the damage counter from the Shrine of Punishment, and just attacks for what looks like 80 damage plus 10 from the. Shrine of Punishment, that's 110 damage. So, player 
B really needs to get that Ultra Ball out. Uh, the candy is in hand. There are two candies in hand. But they just play Cynthia. I'm not sure I really like this play. I really would have gone for the KO here. There were two tre uh, treasures in hand. Uh, that would have been able to get a Rayquaza and a Tapu Lele. Of course, that would have mapped out the six prizes for the opponent. You really want to limit your opponent's damage down to what you have in play, which is just a few cards. Um, but not sure if this was the right option, because now player B just has two Vickavolts in hand. It looks like a Rescue Stretcher and two Supporters. Um, really not a good hand. I think, yeah, just takes the KO. I think the deck generally just plays two rescue stretchers, so having to discard those. Oh, geez. What an awful hand. Having to discard those Vicavolt and rescue stretcher in order to draw more cards, um, it would be really tough coming back from that. They also generally play 303 or 403 Vicavolt. And here comes a Guzma on the Diancy. Promoting the Grubbin? I really don't like this play. Um, what I would have done... I don't know. It feels like at this point there is no right play. I probably would have gotten to... Um, to Rayquaza out and then use Tempest Guzma, and then use Tempest GX. Really just drawing more cards. Sure, you lose those two Vicavolts, but you generally play a second stretcher. And then there's also a third Vicavolt. You only really need one in play, um, potentially two. But here comes that swing around, taking care of that Grubbin. And looks like what they draw is another Vicavolt. Nope, it's a Lightning Energy. But is it too little too late? We'll find out. Looks like they're considering benching the Rayquaza. I would use Stormy Winds at this point, or maybe even not, I would just bench two Rayquaza, attach to the active, attack for 30. Um, I would stretch for Grubbin. That makes sense as well, but I would just attack for 30, really get those energy on those Rayquaza. Oh jeez. Uses Stormy Winds and discards three tools, one of them being the top one being a rare candy. Really what the opponent needed. Uh really what player B needed to set up that Vicavolt that he has in hand. And here comes a another buzzwall. Shrine of Punishment comes down. Putting damage, setting up damage on that Vic, uh, on that Rayquaza. I keep saying Vika Ray. On that Rayquaza. And plays out on an escape rope. Oh, jeez. Putting up that Grubbin. Uses the cargo to get out a beast energy, and if they can draw into it, looks like they only have two cards in hand, using Instruct to draw that one card. Attaches that beast, takes the KO on that grub in. Wow, player B is really not in a good spot. Uh, this is this is a 50 minute best of three timed match. So at this point, I think I would just scoop and give myself extra time for game two. Because what can you do at this point? Your grub in has been knocked out twice. You don't have a rescue stretcher. You don't have anything to draw in hand. I mean, your opponent has, what, two prizes to your six? This is really a tough matchup, and it's really difficult to come back from this. Looks like it's just a... Uh, I don't know what the attack is called, but it's a Latias attack. Uh, attaching, them, attaching energy to the benched, all benched dragon Pokemon. And uh, 
Use the swing around for what looks like the KO. Nope. Needs to flip at least one head. No heads. The right closet right stays alive. Looks like it does 80 damage, plus 20 for Diancy, plus 30 for Choice Band, 130 damage, plus the base 30, 160, plus 10 for Shrine of Punishment. There's no scoop, super scoop of race to roll in this deck. All you can do is pass. Um, take the knockout, actually. But then the right closet pass knocks out. And that's the end of the game. Vika Volt and uh, Vika Ray and Buzzgarb Shrine are one to one. Vika Ray actually kind of prone to breaking. Uh, it is a stage two deck and they do play a lot of energy. So it's really tough to. Um, It's really tough to get good setups. Um, yeah, similarly to Vika Bulu, but with more energy. Vika Ray just does. Vika Ray does. I mean, more damage, more consistent damage, but it also plays more energy, so less consistent setup. And looks like player A has two mulligans. Uh, one mulligan and then the draw for turn, actually. And player B looks like they will... They have an Ultra Ball, so they can discard two Lightning Energy, getting out a Rayquaza or a... Oh, discards a Rare Candy. Why would you do that? Really not a fan of this play. Um... Yeah, I really don't understand this. I mean, I would just attach to the active next turn, Ultra Ball, Rare Candy into Vikavolt, and then attach to the active and Strong Charge and take the knockout. Start taking KOs early and fast. Um, I don't know why they're looking for a Cynthia when they can get a Lily. They already have the Rare Candy in hand. I'm really not a fan of this play. Um, you have the cards in hand. You have what you need to set up. Okay, Ultra Wall for Tapu Lele, that's okay. Not ideal in front of a Buzzgarb Shrine, who can just Guzma knock it out after a few turns of Shrine damage. But what you're looking for really is... <clears throat> what you're looking for really is just that Vika Volt. Uh, here comes a Rayquaza Stormy Winds. Attaches a Grass Energy to it. There's still a Lightning in the discard. Attaches a Lightning from the hand. Escape Rope. Throwing up the Rayquaza active. Uh, really just preventing that Beast Energy Diancy play. And another Rayquaza comes down. Discarding a re Energy Recycler. And another item card. Mysterious Treasure. Looks like three, four item, five item cards. Only on turn one of the game. What a incredibly fast way of just... Oh, jeez. <laughs> incredibly fast way of racking up Trash Lance damage. Uh, Trash Lance is already two hit knocking out these Rayquaza. A Shrine comes down. I don't think Vika Ray plays any stadiums. So, what can you do? Um... Choice band comes down, 60 base damage, 70 damage total with the Shrine of Punishment, and then 10 damage on each of the benched GX Pokemon. Thankfully, Vika Volt doesn't take any damage, while Grubbin doesn't, uh, well, Vika Volt doesn't either, but there's no Vika Volt in play right now. But it looks like it's just attached and 120 damage. Um, they take a prize card, um, and looks like it's just a reveal. And... And I don't know what happened. Looks like it's the end of the game for some reason. 
Um, but no, that was not a knockout. And then player A scoops. Um, after which should be a double prize penalty. But yeah, it looks like that's the end of the game. Um, let me check how much time it passed. 50 minutes. Yeah, uh, probably the end of time, actually. Um, yeah, 50 minutes had passed. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Looks like it's a tie between Fika Ray and Buzzgarb Shrine. And we'll see you next time for round the, the round three matchup of this Lyon League Cup. See you next time.